So you need to make sure that you're brushing your children's teeth properly. And plaque is not only sugar, plaque can be ugali, plaque can be rice. Most of the time, of course, um, starchy substances because then they're eventually metabolized to sugar. So starchy substances contribute a lot to that plaque. guys, Dr. Kendi here and welcome back to another episode of My Oral Health Diaries. I hope you guys had a pleasant week. I hope you were able to spread love. I hope you bought your loved ones nice new toothbrushes and stuff <laughs> that made them happy. Anyways, we are still in the month of February and we are still going to be focusing on pediatric oral health. Unfortunately, our specialist couldn't be with us today, but we shall continue. <laughs> So today we are going to be discussing about decay in children or dental caries. So what is dental caries or what is decay? So this is basically when the tooth kind of like breaks down because of the effect of the caries. So how does caries come about? Caries comes about when a child's tooth has plaque and then it is not brushed for quite some time then now the carious process begins. So basically food gets attached onto the tooth and then there's a bacteria that comes and colonizes this food that stays on the tooth for more than like 48 hours untouched and then the tooth is there. So that's how decay essentially starts. So dental caries in children has been like the most prevalent um, oral disease in children. And even from the study that was done in 2015, there was actually a national oral health survey that was done in Kenya. And we found that um, there was 23.9% prevalence of dental caries among children. That's quite high because you can imagine it's, the, the study included about 2,298 children. So it's still quite a high number. And with decay comes along symptoms such as pain, abscesses, and you know, just general discomfort and poor quality of life because the child is not able to chew properly. They are not able to indulge in things that they would ordinarily be comfortable taking. So decay, it's a big problem. We, we have really been trying to encourage that parents educate themselves on what causes decay because it's like um, the concept, I, I think I have something to kind of demonstrate. With teeth, teeth behave sort of like vegetables when they are sick. So we have this big onion over here and then we have this small onion over here. So you can imagine, actually this small onion is like a perfect demo because it has a place that is starting to kind of rot. So let's imagine that this rot is decay because that is what decay does. You can imagine like enamel is the hardest substance in your body, but decay does this to it. So it kind of like eats it up because the bacteria is producing acid. So it's kind of like <laughs> dissolving the enamel. So this is a small baby tooth that has now been affected by decay. food. You want to use this onion to make your stew or something. And then you have to remove this portion so that you can cook with the rest. For the bigger, bigger onion, you know, it's not so bad because then maybe you'd have like a small place here and then you'd have to remove that part. Baby teeth, really small teeth. So when they get affected by decay, then it progresses very fast and it affects really like the whole tooth. Yeah. So it's not, it's not something that is pleasant to deal with. A baby tooth is actually easier to clean as opposed to an adult tooth because it kind of has um, more subtle features. There are things we call pits and fissures on the chewing surface of the teeth. So for adults or permanent teeth, they tend to have very defined pits and fissures. And we will discuss, you know, pits and fissures, sealants and all that maybe next time. But for baby teeth, they are very friendly. The fissure system is really easy to clean. So by the time a child is getting decay, 
that plaque has been there for quite some time. So we really need to be more careful and cautious to make sure that we are doing a good job with oral hygiene in our children to prevent caries. We do not want our children to be statistics. So essentially, decay will start and present itself as sensitivity initially, and then progressively it will develop into pain or discomfort that comes occasionally when the child is exposed to hot or cold stuff and um, even like sugar. If they chew something sugary, they may feel like there's some discomfort. That's early. Eventually, the small cavity becomes, of course, bigger and bigger. And by this time, it would, oh, let me just go back to like the anatomy of the tooth. So you can imagine a tooth has like the outer part. I'm trying to get an example here. Maybe I'm going to use my permanent tooth model to show that, yes. So maybe we can look at this tooth here. So the outer covering, the enamel, and then inside you have the dentin, and then you have the pulp. So the pulp is the most central part of the tooth that contains like the blood and nerve vessels and everything that gives the tooth vitality. So for the baby teeth, they are really small. So when decay starts, it kind of like progresses into the pulp really, really fast. So it's very important that we are on the lookout for signs of decay in children. So if a child tells you that, you know, mommy, I'm not able to chew, I feel discomfort, then probably that's a good time for you to take the child for assessment so that the dentist can pick up if there are any cavities. So we have said like, if in Kenya we have, that was like in 2015, 23.9% prevalence, then it's really a challenge. Still on this study that was done, it was established that only 9% of children had attended like a dental visit within the year that this study was being done. 9% is a very small number. So I really think we can do better as caregivers and as parents. We really need to be on the lookout because decay is, it's painful. It causes the tooth to look different. You can see on this model, like this tooth that is black here, this is actually a tooth that has had decay. So a change in color is one of the things that would present, you know, in, in the child's oral cavity. The tooth is not white. So at the top of it, you'd basically see black or brown, or you'd see like a big hole. If this progresses now, you can get something we call an abscess. And for children, it's very common because then their immunity is not so high. And as we said, the infection spreads really fast from the enamel to the pulp. So you find a child has a swelling, it kind of looks like a pimple, but a pimple in the oral cavity. Eventually, if it becomes really, really bad, it may spread to other regions of the face, sometimes even like this region down here, we call them the facial spaces. So then a child basically looks like their whole face is swollen just because of a tooth. So dental caries is really something that I think we should take a bit more seriously because it affects the children negatively. So we've said the major cause of decay is that, that there is plaque. So you need to make sure that you're brushing your children's teeth properly. And plaque is not only sugar. Plaque can be ugali, plaque can be rice. Most of the time, of course, um, starchy substances because then they're eventually metabolized to sugar. So starchy substances contribute a lot to that plaque. If the child is feeding and snacking a lot, then that just means that every time the child's like mouth is at a low pH, because every time they're exposing, exposing, exposing their mouth, and they're not cleaning their teeth properly, so then that's another contributing factor. Um, there's also, um, if you're breastfeeding your child, and you are breastfeeding and not cleaning their teeth, then the milk is also a contributor to the plaque. If a child has teeth, this is at around six months, then you really need to take care of these teeth. You need to kind of schedule the breastfeeding so that you make sure that these teeth are not affected. Milk eventually is metabolized into a sugar. And, and so you find that children under six are now developing decay, and that's what we call early childhood caries. So we as mothers, you need to educate yourself on you know, what to do, how to clean your child's teeth, how to plan that breastfeeding, and to make sure that you actually stop breastfeeding by the time the child is about one year old. Also, just try to avoid putting 
adding sugar to milk, adding you know sweeteners to things that the child is taking. A good trick to making sure that the child stops like um, breastfeeding or bottle feeding on milk is maybe like diluting the milk over time so that eventually the child gets used to taking water instead of milk or a sweetened substance. So those are the major causes of decay in children and of course sweets which are everywhere. You really need to control. If you want to give your child sweets then the best thing is that you give them sweets during meals or just before a meal not randomly during the day so that the sugar is just idling and especially not before they go to bed. Just before they eat, you can give them something to, to eat if it's a sweet and then they can eat food and then you can make sure that you brush. We really want to avoid decay because the consequences are not so good. But at least today we've learned what decay is and yes, it can affect baby teeth. So we really need to be on the lookout for our children to make sure that their teeth stay stronger and they stay healthy for a long time. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of My Oral Health Diaries. I hope you learned something about decay in children or what we are calling dental caries. If you have any questions, please feel free to holler at us at the comment section and please continue sharing, liking, subscribing, and let's continue educating ourselves on oral health matters we can make a big difference in oral health in Kenya. We just need to learn, educate ourselves, and then make better decisions. I'll see you again next time on My Oral Health Diaries. Producer Akisema, sour. I told Roraco in a sketch. Akinimongia, Greg. It's only 10 minutes. I feel like I've talked for 30. Oh, I continue. Okay, fine.